Welcome back to the channel. My name is Constantine the Great, and today we have our first game of the series against the Auburn Tigers. But before we jump into the game, I want to say thank you to everyone who sent me a message and gave me ideas for the future of the series. I did record this game right after I recorded the intro though, so we'll get into playbook, scouting, and everything else in the next episode. A lot more of you guys watched the first episode than I ever imagined would. So thank you so much for watching, and make sure you follow me on Twitter at Constantine under slash GR8. And without further ado, let's jump right into it. Season openers don't get much tougher than this for the Nuclear Elk. And it looks like Kirk Herbstreet agrees. We are definitely the underdog, and there's a great chance we get the doors blown off of us. But hey, maybe we shock the world. Before the matchup, let's take a look at some of Auburn's better players. Bo Nix is 85 overall. And he's on a hot streak? Great. One of the higher rated players on the team, junior Seth Williams, 90 overall with 88 speed. Anthony Schwartz has 96 speed. They have some weapons at wide receiver. A couple 80s at right end. Impact player number 90, KJ Britt. He's a monster. Pretty solid at cornerback. I don't know how much success we're going to have passing the ball today. And without further ado, let's get into the first ever game in Limestone College Nuclear Elk history. I'm excited, and I hope you are too. We are going to rock the All Blacks for our first ever home game. Taking a look at Coach Constantine, looking good in that suit. We are clearly at a disadvantage when it comes to offense and defense. Let's just see if we can keep it close. Oh, look at the boys running on the field. If anything, the uniforms look nice. I'm a little bit nervous, I'm not gonna lie. I feel like I'm gonna lose by 70, but I'm gonna do my best to keep it close. Playing today at Brown's Ferry Field, the first ever coin toss in Limestone College history. And the Tigers won the toss. And here we go. Walter Henderson will take the first kick back in Nuclear Elk history and gets absolutely destroyed. Coach Constantine looks a little out of place in that suit. Let's try and establish the run game early. Tackled behind the line of scrimmage. Let's try the read option and see if we can get Jansen going. Jansen's got some space. The first positive play in Elk history. See if we can get Junior Antonio Merrick here open in space. And it hits right off his hands. Not a great start. Pretty solid punt. Oh, no. Oh, no. What a return for Christian Tut. And Auburn is going to start off with great field position. We really need to look out for Seth Williams, at wide receiver. And Bo Nix throws to his left. It's caught by Eli Stove, out of bounds. Second and six. Let's see if we can hold Auburn to a field goal. And some more missed tackles, and Auburn is in the end zone. Not a great start. DJ Williams in for six. Well, we knew it would be rough, but you can't miss 37 tackles on your way to giving up a touchdown. We're going to go back to Spurlock. He's our best player, and we have to get him going on the ground if we have a chance at all in this game. Okay, I'll take four yards. Let's go ahead and run a halfback screen. Spurlock gets away from the tackler. I'll take the three yards. Consistently, I feel like Ted will be our best player all year. Let's see if we can move the sticks and stay on the field for more than 30 seconds this time. Junior Antonio Merrick with the first down. Tight ends and running backs, I think, are going to be our strength. We have to get both of them involved. And we have to get Gabe Jansen outside of the pocket. Ted Spurlock moving the pile. See if we can get the tight end underneath again. Actually, let's see if we can get good in underneath. Oh, 
Oh, and picked off. Terrible decision. Not great, Bob. I believe I had the flat. I should have just went for the flat. I tried to get just a little greedy. It's time for some elk defense. Let's make a stop. And McKinley absolutely whiffs on the tackle. We aren't making that first tackle. Let's bring some pressure. <laughs> tackle. Oh, he breaks another one. And gets pushed out of bounds at the 10. They give it back to Williams. He's got some space to the right. And Auburn is again in for the touchdown. DJ Williams with his second touchdown of the day. And the Elk have no answers. So far, passing the ball has not been a good choice. So we're going to go back to the ground game. And remind me to stick with it on third and short. I ran right into the tackler. Fourth and one. From our own 26, I think we got a punt. We can't give him the ball on the 26-yard line. Burned our number one corner, Seth Williams. Let's bring some heat on second and one. Oh, he breaks the tackle. I shouldn't have went to that view. Nice play by Dubinsky in second and 10. Bo Nix's first incompletion of the day. Beautiful pass. Another missed tackle. And a terrible angle and touchdown Tigers. Is there a mercy rule in college football? And the Tigers will take a three touchdown lead at the end of the first quarter. Limestone College looking like they're playing their first football game. Even though I don't want to, I think we have to start going to the air a little more, especially if we have any chance of coming back in this game. Broke a tackle by Merrick. Even though Graves is a starter, Merrick definitely has more speed. Streak fields. See if we can hit Richard on the slant. And we take a sack, third and 15, not where we want to be. Gabe Jansen having a tough day. I'm going to run a little halfback screen, see if we can catch him sleeping. Offense is definitely sputtering. Bo Nix is going to throw it deep over the middle. Picked off by Dave McCarty. Let's go. Intercepted by Dave McCarty. What a play. That is currently the best play in Nuclear Elk history. What a play. Great coverage. Great hands. Now let's make some plays on offense. I actually got super excited during that interception and knocked my mic off my table. So I'm not sure how that's going to sound, but let's go. Spurlock with a two-yard gain. I'm still just honestly jacked from that interception. Might be the only good play we make today. Let's see if we can get Fields involved here. Oh, brother, this guy stinks! Terrible throw. I threw it right over the middle of the field to a linebacker who didn't even have to move. What am I doing? My goal was to throw no interceptions in my first game, and I have two in the first half, so I'm going to say now that's my last one. We're not throwing anymore. Tackled behind the line of scrimmage. Auburn knows this hurry-up kills us. Bo Nix breaks the tackle. And it's a handoff up the middle, and Auburn gets the first down. DJ Williams is crushing us today. Averaging 11 yards per carry. Yikes. DJ Williams is down at the one. And the option, and they are in for the touchdown to take a four-possession lead. Yikes. So far, through almost two quarters, we have no completions to our wide receivers, two interceptions, and not a lot of rush yards. This is not going well. 
I know I said no more interceptions, and I meant it. I, I knew that wouldn't be picked off. Jansen looks for Fields, and finally a catch by a wide receiver. Roman Fields is the number one receiver on the team. We need to get him involved. Coach just wants to run four verticals. I don't blame him. It's We're down by four touchdowns, but I think we got to mix it up a little bit. Huge catch by Melvin Smith. Richard gets the catch and gets a seven-yard gain. Try to find the tight end over the middle here. Graves is wide open. Spurlock's got some room. Two-yard gain. See if we can get the first touchdown pass in Nuclear Elk history. Jansen drops back, and he is hit as he's thrown, and that'll be fourth down. I think we got to take the points. It's now up to Cornell McCarthy to score the first points in school history. The kick is up, and it's good. Way to go, big guy. Auburn definitely not taking their foot off the pedal. They got a screen to the left. Good open field tackle. Auburn almost into field goal range already. I'm going to use her Benson here. Oh, got completely destroyed off the line. And Schwartz with the catch. Dubinsky should have turned his head around. Yikes. Makes the tackle after a 12-yard gain. And he's hit as he's thrown, but... Eli's stove is wide open as time expires, and Auburn puts another seven points on the board. Not a great half for your nuclear elk. We're going to need a hell of a halftime speech from Coach Constantine. Great moments are born in great opportunity. All right, the plan for the second half is to not suck ass. Let's see if we can go ahead and do that. Good start. I like it. Only two yards for DJ Williams. Now, we were burned all half in the air, so let's see if we can make a stop here. And Bo Nix is sacked. And he is brought down by the big man, number 91, Andre Salas, a.k.a. Salsa. What a play by the big guy. And Auburn will be punting the ball. I think that's the first three and out in school history. Spurlock averaging 2.2 yards per carry, not what you're looking for. And Jansen sacked yet again for a seven-yard loss. We're now looking at a third and 16. K.J. Britt, absolute monster. And Gooden makes the catch over the middle. What a catch by Al Gooden. I thought that was going to be picked off. What a throw and what a catch. And Pollard drops the ball. Great stuff, mate. We are being dominated at the line of scrimmage, and it is definitely showing. Wide open over the middle, and Nick Wilkerson hauls it in for his first catch of the day. 19 huge yards for the Elk. I think we got to stick to the air right now. It's the only thing that seems to be working, as long as I do not throw another pick. Gooden plows his way through for a 13-yard catch. Let's go back to Spurlock here on the ground. He could find zero room on that run. Now, we could technically still get a first down on this, but I think we need to shoot for the end zone here. Jansen escapes from the pocket. He rolls out right. He's looking for Smith. He's got it. Touchdown, L. And Melvin Smith catches the first touchdown in Nuclear Elk history. The play is under review. Oh, no. Did he get the foot down? 
Oh, no. I don't think he did. And the play stands. Touchdown is good. Hey, I'll take it. Coach wants to go for two here, and why the hell not? We're down by a billion. See if we can hit Graves on the slant. And the throw sails out of bounds. Tight end definitely got bumped on the route. Looks like all we're getting is six. Bo Nix drops back to pass. Hits the fullback in the flat. Huge third down here. As Bo Nix has two incompletions and one is an interception. And he's tripped up, but not before he gets a first down. And Auburn stays on the field. He's got some blocks, and he's in the open field. 14 more yards for DJ Williams, and he is destroying the nuclear elk. Yikes. With one quarter left to play, the nuclear elk are down by a lot. We're just playing for pride at this point. But the elk don't quit. And we bite on the read option. And Bo Nix breaks a tackle. And he's going to score. Bo Nix is not that good in real life. I did say they weren't going to score 70, and I hope I did not jinx myself. Bo Nix just bouncing off of elk tacklers. And just like all day, the run game nets us almost absolutely nothing. Actually, it nets us negative yards. And I throw off my back foot, but it's caught by Nick Wilkerson. I thought he dropped it. I think I need to scramble more, get out of the pocket, throw on the run. And I'm hit as I throw again. And we're now looking at third and ten. Al Gooden is open and... You all right, Al? Wondering when Auburn's going to bring in their backups here. Bo Nix runs the read option again and gets into space. Henderson tackles him out of bounds. 20 yards for Bo Nix. And the Elk look lost out here. What am I going to do? And we tackle DJ Williams for a loss. You love to see it. Salsa with two tackles for loss and a sack today. A good game for him. One of the few nuclear Elk having a good game. Jackson catches it in space, runs over Dubinsky, gets caught up on his own player. And we're looking at third and inches. And I miss a tackle nope. in the backfield and miss another one. And DJ Williams is going to score, I believe, his fourth touchdown of the day to make the score a disgusting 49-9. to And Jansen has absolutely no time and is crushed for a four-yard sack. Oh, boy. I think if we do another three and out here, we might let the backup quarterback come in and take one drive at the end of the game. Smith is open. Jukes. He breaks the tackle. 38 big yards for Melvin Smith. I think Gabe heard me say I was going to take him out. Let's see if Fields can burn off the line here. He does not. And I lob it up to Smith, who's open again. Breaks another tackle. 34 more big yards for Melvin Smith. Jansen drops back. He's looking for Gooden. Touchdown, Nuclear Elk! What a catch by the senior. Gooden's not giving up. We're going to go for two because why the hell not? And I throw it into double coverage. And the two-point conversion is no good. Williams takes a handoff to the outside. He's got space. McKinley misses. It's up to Henderson. He also misses, but he goes out of bounds, and we are saved by the sideline. Williams gets tackled after seven yards and picks up another first down for the Tigers. Auburn could just kneel it here. I mean, I'm just saying. Oh, 
Elliott with a nice tackle. And that'll do it, folks. The first game in serious history comes to an end, and it's an absolute blowout for the Auburn Tigers. But we were huge underdogs, and I think we made some plays to be proud of today. The Dave McCarty interception, the two touchdowns for Gabe Jansen. We have a lot to work on, but we also have a lot to build on. DJ Williams destroyed us today. We had no answer at all. Keep your head up, boys. Got a long season ahead of us. We got destroyed at the line of scrimmage on both sides of the ball. We couldn't really run. We had some success in the air. I didn't throw another pick, though, which I promised. We did get some XP awards here. 10 first downs, that's actually surprising. 16 of 29 for 239, two touchdowns, two picks. He played all right. I feel like he definitely earned the chance to play next week. A lot of those mistakes were on me, not him. He doesn't have the strongest arm, but I do need to scramble with him more. Not a great day for Ted Spurlock. 13 attempts for 19 yards. We really need to find a way to get him going. On the receiving end, senior wide receiver Melvin Smith led the way with four receptions for 100 yards and a touchdown. Al Gooden with three catches for 52 and a touchdown. I thought Roman Fields would have a better day than he did. Only one catch for 16 yards. One sack today from senior Andre Salas, a.k.a. Salsa. And of course, the big pick by Dave McCarty early in the second quarter. McCarty also led the team with five solo tackles. Salsa and McKinley getting our only tackles for loss today. Looking at the team stats, we got absolutely obliterated. We actually did pretty well on third down, a lot better than I thought we would. The two turnovers really killed us, but even without them, I don't think we would have won. The difference in total yards, we even held the ball for longer than Auburn. We just do not have the athletes needed to compete. And we'll be back next week when we play the Chippewas out there at Central Michigan. I've actually partied there a couple times. Nice area. But thank you so much for watching. My name is Constantine the Great. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a like. Please subscribe. Leave a comment on what I'm doing wrong because I'm sure I'm doing almost everything wrong. And I will see you guys next time. Later. I'm too far. I'm too far. I'm too far. I'm too far. Check the peace, check the rain. Next time you catch me, I might spread wings. Fly. A Rohan solo, don't need nobody for, for helping. Me. When I'm up in this bitch, I'm fly like Millennium Falcon. And bitches know they ain't welcome. All these rappers, I'll get them.